Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Georgia and today I'm going to be watching season 4 episode 4 of Sex Education. If you want access to my own car reactions, the link to the Patreon page will be in the description below. Last episode, Otis and Ruby started with Otis's campaigning against O. He created this campaign video he didn't do a rap video like O did he did something that was much more in tune with himself and he just gave a speech straight from the heart about why he should be the counsellor and I thought it was actually a very good move and very heartfelt and sweet we learned that he suffered from anxiety I don't know if we had been told that in earlier seasons but I didn't remember that that was a fact about Otis so I was I was pretty surprised and it, it really means a lot that he included that in his message I feel. He was supposed to go to a queer night with Eric but Eric decided to go and get ready with the new popular group at the new school and in the end he didn't go because Eric didn't really want him there and yeah. <laughs> Eric seemed to have a nice time though, like he certainly does fit in with this group's vibe and the, the queer night was certainly more their vibe than Otis's vibe but it just it feels like they're drifting apart and I don't like it. Um, Maeve didn't get the scholarship in America that she was applying for or internship and um, she then got a call and her mum is seriously ill in the hospital. She's had an overdose and oh my god. Poor Maeve people. I I think she's gonna die. And oh my god. I've had such a love-hate relationship with Erin throughout this whole show. Oh god. I was rooting for her. Like she messed up so much throughout Maeve's childhood. Maeve and her brother. Why can't I remember her brother's name? that's annoying but hopefully he'll be in this episode to remind me Sean but when she came back and they were rebuilding their relationship I thought it was so nice and then she relapsed again and maybe had to call social services oh my god I cried so much and then in season three when she came back and gave Maeve the money to go to America like moments like that that she had with Maeve really meant so much and really made me root for her even more and to now know that she's relapsed again and she's seriously ill and probably is going to die it's so sad but it's even more sad for Maeve because this is yet another person that she's going to be losing and she's just been through so much in her life she never ever catches a break and also Otis stayed over at Ruby's and they woke up hugging I know nothing happened but like from Maeve's perspective that is so shit to hear when Otis was jealous of her and that guy oh i just feel her so much they put her through so much in the show also amy and isaac nearly kissed and i am so rooting for them potentially my favorite couple of the whole show if it happens i don't know like up until this point my favorite couple was probably eric and adam and they haven't had a scene yet this season that is wild um but then you know season three happened and it, it's kind of for the best that they aren't together because they are on very different walks of life i've never really been interested in otis and i used to ship jackson and viv in season two but not so much anymore you can tell that's definitely platonic so i mean ac amy and isaac might end up being my favorite ship of the show if they happen but i don't want to speak too soon in case it's like a crack ship that never goes anywhere oh Jean and Jakob I did love Jean and Jakob as well actually oh my god they they were my faves in season one why don't we drink afterwards she oh, is such what? a forward lady she's been making moves since day one <laughs> he's gonna have an issue he's going to have an issue okay maybe not <laughs> we're down this straight away <laughs> oh, 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 oh. sorry sorry have any little blue pills uh, no uh, but i did try one once when my ex-wife was gosh, i don't want to think about you and your ex-wife <laughs> the way the music <laughs> come back <laughs> what a music choice by the way oh, it's been a long time to be fair thank you for dinner michael but i really need a proper man in the bedroom he's been out the field for a long time give him a chance <laughs> fancy a quickie at mine oh yes Oh, that's a good hug. How's America? It was good. I missed you though. That's not the same Elsie, is it? No, she looks completely different. I can't believe she still has those jeans. Oh! Oh! If 
you want to stay home, you can. No. I want to go to college. There's no point worrying about it. You need to take your mind off it. The show hasn't been going very well. It's been quite bad, actually. It's going to take you on too much. taken the job in the first place. No. Oh. Who's that? Uh, Jem. Dad owns the place. Very pretty. Is she? No. Uh, didn't notice. But did your dad ever go on that date? <laughs> no, I don't know. Why do you care? Did you kind of give Adam the updates on what happened? <laughs> Just uh, really happy for him that he's moving on. That's all. <laughs> I hate myself for wanting them to get back together because of seasons one and two, but season three just really turned me around on Mr. Gro. She's going to take the baby. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm Otis's friend. Is he here? Uh, no, no, he isn't, actually. Somebody called um, Mavis has just got back, so he's gone to see her. <laughs> Mavis. Huh. Extenuating circumstances, Eric. Don't be mad, don't be Let mad. Me know, Otis. Although he should have texted him. Thanks for giving me a lift. Let's go. Yeah. What are you doing here? I just thought I'd come and give you some support. I've missed you. I've missed you. Ow! Sorry, oh my god, what the hell was that? You're dead sweaty when I drive, so knock yourself out. Oh, oh lord. <laughs> Hopefully they don't mow Eric down on the way. Why is there just a Bible in the middle of the road? Is that a sign? Oh no. Oh. At least it was only on the helmet, but don't let it drip down. because He even told his dad about me. They're like best mates. How sweet is that? Yeah. Yeah. It is very what? sweet. It's a bit awkward. <laughs> so I found a lump. <laughs> like in my balls, that freaking out. But I'm doing tests, so. I just want to let you know because you're my best friend. Thank you for letting me know. I'm here for you. Thanks. Oh. Oh. No. Don't get jealous over that. Come on. Oh, no. I had such high hopes for him. I swear to God, if he turns out to be like a jealous boyfriend type. Oh, CBA. But Jackson and Viv's friendship is one of the highlights of the show for me. Season two, I think, is where they were at their best. But the fact that they've remained best friends since then, I just absolutely love it because they were such different people back then. Um, I really hope Viv doesn't let her relationship get in the way of their friendship if that's where this is heading if the jealousy in Bo jumps out and she's like stays away from Jackson because of that when Jackson is going through such a horrible time it's like it's similar to the like Ruby Maeve and Otis situation when he got those two texts in the beginning I was like go to Maeve go to Maeve because she is the one in a dire situation right now so I hope Viv stays Jackson's biggest supporter <laughs> Oh no, he's not in today and his line Excuse is long. Me. No cue jumping. I'm actually taking some walk in appointments today as Otis hasn't turned up. I also have some free t shirts. They are organic. Oh, that's, that is cringe. Who wants a t shirt that says that? No, you're not going to wear that. Otis, you do need to get into the habit of responding to texts, though. Like, give an update. God, he looks rough, doesn't he? I can't believe that you've come all the way back from America for this. You better be really, really ill this time. Sean. <laughs> do you not that, remember the last time funny. she ended up in hospital? A little bit funny. I'm not laughing. Because it's happened before. He just thinks she's invincible, but... Oh, gosh. Because you guys were hugging earlier, and I, um, I, I, I don't want to get my hopes up. If you're already involved with someone else. <laughs> no, Jackson's my best mate and he's going through some personal stuff right now. But there is definitely nothing going on between us. Okay, okay, cool. That's fine. If he didn't actually know, that's fair enough. This is statistics book that I'm really enjoying the way it analyzes data. Oh, yeah, did you finish the... Uh, oh, no. You... God, they are perfect for each other. People think I want to kiss them all the time. You're just saying that to make me feel better. But it really looked like it. Kate and I are ethically non-monogamous. So I was wondering if you might want to go on a date. So yeah, they didn't I'm misread okay. the signs. That is incredible. How has he done that? That smiley face. 
Everything all right? There we go. Oh, that is how it. you should handle a text, Otis. It's not like a liking or anything. Offensive. Can I take your photo? Sure. She's definitely smart to lean more into the photography side of things if that smiley face you drew is anything to go by. He is nervous. Do you not have a phone to scroll through or something? Maeve and Sean Wiley, come with me. Is she there? Oh God, it's the room. I am very sorry to inform you that your mother has passed away. She lost consciousness and went into a coma. It was very unexpected. I really like the way they've muffled that because it's like once you hear that first bit of news, everything else just gets drowned out. The details don't really matter. I thought I could leave her at home, but my uh, my sister had to work, so uh, yeah, I should probably feed her. Go ahead, I uh, love babies. They're uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you cool. Handsome little devil, aren't you? Oh, she likes you. Ah. <laughs> you know, it's just like the wrong person, or like right. you know, the wrong mm. time. I have a feeling this might be the wrong person too. <laughs> that could create a really awkward family tree. Can I help you? Yes, you can. You can stop taking us as clients. There will be a student council debate this Thursday lunchtime in the atrium. Who are you again? Oh, please. Oh, stop shut pretending up, oh. I was going to tell him if it got approved. I bet you were. What's your connection to Otis? We dated briefly. I broke up with him, obviously. You're hoping that one day he will see the light. She does just see three people and immediately, doesn't she? You're the person. He has always known how special he is. That's not true. Okay. They shouldn't be playing any games. They shouldn't be leaving you confused. I don't think Otis has given any mixed signals though. When we were 10, you decided that you were going to make my life a living hell and now I promise you, I plan on doing the exact same thing to you. It's a promise, Sarah. Now, Sarah. I've got a debate to prepare for. Just kind of, you know, relax. <laughs> Just do nothing. <clears throat> okay. Candid. I feel like you're still doing something. If you thought you were getting feelings for someone who your best friend used to have a thing with... Is this your non-friend Isaac? ...for the person that they used to have the thing with? I really don't think Mabel would care. Okay. As it's Isaac. If it was Otis, it would be a different story. Yeah, you should be upfront with your friend. Because if you don't tell them and they find out... It'll be a lot worse. So you have to tell her about the Ruby thing too. Has O's behaviour ever been not inclusive or mean? No. No? Do you feel that O has ever crossed the line or treated anyone badly? Um, no. We think she's great. Sorry, I didn't catch what you said. Uh, don't worry, babe, I'll tell you later. That's a bit shit. Look, this is feeling quite bitchy now. Oh, come on. <laughs> so, there has been an incident. Oh. Ruby tried to approach them that without energy Abby is there. so emotionally draining. That was kind of bit Actually, that's not gossip, it's a fact. Have you seen Otis? Because he's ignoring my texts. Uh, no, no, he stood me up this morning. Because Maeve is back in town and whenever she's around, nothing else matters to him. I feel bad for Ruby, but I also don't think Otis has given her any mixed signals. Like, I know he stayed the night at her place. But he did say maybe I shouldn't stay because of Maeve. And Ruby was like, honestly, it's fine. I don't see you like that anymore. Like, just stay and watch The Real Housewives or whatever. He's been very upfront about the fact that he is still with Maeve and he loves Maeve and all that. And he's tried to be considerate of Ruby's feelings, I think. But if Ruby still harbours feelings for him and she's only doing this because of that, or she's doing this in the hopes of getting back with him or closer to him again, I don't think that's on Otis, unless I've missed things because I haven't been binging this season as I usually would. I don't think Otis has done anything wrong when it comes to how he's been acting with Ruby. You get a shot now, come on. No, no, I, I think no. I should get down. Oh my, oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> my balls! Hey. Yes. It does look like it would hurt, to I'm be fair. Yes, oh, that's so wholesome. When moving your mother to the mortuary, will you be able to see her soon? Oh, pop. Brings the mood down a bit, doesn't it? Oh. I remember seeing him dead and he didn't really look like himself. 
And after that, I couldn't really remember what a live Uncle Pat looked like anymore. I don't think I can see Mum like that. Do they have to look at it? I found some guests who are going to come and co-host with you this week, okay? Right. What, what kind of guests? You know, sex people like yourself. Like Otis? Oh, oh that's her name, not an exclamation. Come on what? in. What? Oh, this is G. Oh, she's going to have a lot of extra exposure then. How did your date go with the uh, teacher? Uh, it uh, wasn't the best, nor what I didn't do. Oh my God, he's actually going to say, isn't he? Struggle, you know, sometimes to get it going in the penal departments. Oh my! <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Sorry, I, I thought we were telling each other stuff. Not now. that, never that. There are lies. I do it. Flashback to episode one with the Viagra. I think you've got performance anxiety. Thinking doesn't overcome fear. Action does, and never take more than hey. one Viagra. Your penis will explode. He knows that one burst out. Hey, fancy a quickie at my place? I've got the little blue pills and I'm feeling manly. <laughs> well, it's definitely mum. And she's definitely dead. I kind of want to get out of here. Mm. It's okay, you can go, I'm fine. Okay. Is this the last we're going to see of him? Tell them I'll be out in a bit. Okay. Uh. He actually looks really affected by it now. Call me if you need anything. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you'll be there like always. The contrast of the storylines going on in this episode, I'm getting whiplash. I did not have a Mr. Gross sex scene on my bingo card, I cannot lie. I don't know why this is happening. Or well, maybe it'll come back. <laughs> maybe it just has to mean something for you. And influencer. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. That was a very warm welcome no. and quite a compliment from yourself. No. I'm going to head off. Uh, but Maeve's still in there. She's just finishing a crossword. My mum died. Oh my god, Sean, I'm so sorry. Do you want to sit with us? Uh... Nah. Are you alright? Yeah, no, I'm sure? fine, I'm fine. He doesn't seem alright at all, does he? But how could you be? That is so cute. They made their own storybook for him. What? No. Again? Gosh. That means you're very lucky. Oh, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> there is a soup kitchen at the village hall tonight. I don't know where that is. Will you show me? I can't. I can't go dressed like this. Was there anyone I can call for you to come and pick you up? No, it's okay. I have a lift. I can't figure out what the word is. What letter or word that begins with W and ends in a Z? I can only think of was, but surely that's not in the crossword. Oh my gosh. Ah, so I'm helping out at the village hall at the soup kitchen tonight and they're really short and stuff, so I'm sorry. This will be his first taster of how they'll react to him actually being him. That look wasn't great from the pasta. If a person doesn't know their own boundaries, then that can cause resentments in a relationship. Yes, yes, <clears throat> yes, hello, hello. I, I was calling because I was having relations with a new lady friend and I was struggling to perform. I was thinking about my wife. Sorry, my ex-wife. Oh. She moved on and I thought if I could have a fling, I might be able to move on too. He's become so open now. I feel like you were cheating? I did. It felt like a betrayal. Operates better when you have a secure connection and when you do, you're penis functions properly. I hope they're good Let's together. Come on, shall we? Oh, sorry. It's wonderful to have people outside the church come to help. It's just so sad we've lost our funding. So this place will have to shut down. It's always places like these that get the budget cuts, isn't it? Oh, of course. Are you all right? Yeah, I finished the crossword. That's good. Mum died. We're here for you. Whatever you need. Hello, Martin. Oh, this is so confusing. I miss you too. Oh. Could they become my favourite couple? <laughs> no, there's no way. <laughs> what are you eating? I always eat a pepperoni before bed. James, that's disgusting. Ew. Oh, sorry, it's nearly done. Pepperonis leave the worst taste in your mouth. Otis 
respond for the love of god it's not that hard this is your message though ruby i pet love you Oh, she just does not get a response. <laughs> he kind of deserves that for not responding to anyone else we text. That was, without a shadow of a doubt, my favourite episode of the season so far. Probably because it focused a lot more on the characters we actually know and love. I was quite a main focus, but I am quite intrigued about the war between Ruby and O and O and Otis. As expected, Maeve's mum did die. Um, the poor girl just can't be happy for five minutes. I feel like there was probably some kind of metaphor in there of her wanting to finish the crossword but I can't think of what it is really. Um, maybe like getting some closure by finishing that because she didn't really get closure with her mum I'm not sure. I think it was really nice to see Amy and Otis's interactions both of them waiting in the car for Maeve all day long and they had some really funny scenes together. Um, they're two characters that don't interact much but when they do it's always gold so i loved seeing those two together just being there for Maeve as well like really showing how much they love and support her by waiting there all day it's truly horrible and now is it up to Maeve to plan the funeral as well if we're going to be getting one like oh it just so much falls on her shoulders all the time it's infuriating because from day one she's been someone who has always deserved better and life just keeps getting worse and worse for her it's been very evident that ruby still harbors feelings for otis i think the fact that she's so lonely as well doesn't help what with her not having olivia and anwar and not making any new friends at the college so she's putting all of her efforts into this oh the otis thing and when otis isn't there like it really brings home how alone she is and how much she does crave crave having people around her again and crave Otis I guess like her feelings for him are almost heightened because he's the only person that she can really speak to here. For me Otis and Ruby never worked it was always Maeve for him so Ruby deserves someone that truly loves her back and I hope we see her find someone by the end of the show like imagine we had like a massive plot twist and Ruby and Jackson found found love in each other or something quite random but I hope Ruby gets a happy ending as as much as I like I'm up and down with her character. I know a lot of people stand her, but I still don't forget like all the horrible things that she says to people. She's iconic, but she can be very mean and bitchy. Um, oh, speaking of bitchy though, Abby is kind of a bitch. Like, she definitely spreads that toxic positivity around. Like, yeah, you can be positive, but like, you can't never experience a negative emotion. And the way she spoke to Aisha, I really didn't like when she was when she said like I, I didn't catch what you said there instead of repeating it she was like oh, I'll tell you later babes she's brushed it off and that can make her feel so excluded if she does that on a regular basis like if she misses something in the conversation she'll just say tell you later and she definitely won't tell her later so that was really shitty of her that's like one of those micro things you don't really pick up if you're on the outside looking in but as Aisha experiences that all the time it's probably so infuriating for her to hear that and those looks that um she was giving PK as well like they both could just like see it PK clearly pick picked up on it and she got spoken over as well when she tried to say something about O which could actually be vital to Otis's side of the campaign so I really want to hear what she was going to say. Before I didn't really have anything against anyone in that group, but now I've gone right off Abby. Like she had her moments and she came to help Eric with the soup kitchen thing, which was nice, but uh, the way she treats people sometimes, I'm, I'm not here for. Mr. Gross storyline this episode was so good as well. Like I feel like that is a massive problem that people have when their marriages break down or even when you're leaving like a long-term relationship. Especially someone of his age who's been out of the game for so long. And even he, like, didn't they say, Maureen said in season two that her husband hadn't touched her in three years or something like that. So it had been a long time even prior to the marriage breaking down. I, God only knows how long it's been since he was with a woman other than her. So it's bound to feel like you're cheating on her. Especially when he doesn't really want the marriage to end in the first place. And I'm so glad that she went to him and said that she missed him too. And it looks like they could potentially start mending their relationship. Because I am rooting for them. The Groffs. Like, 
They started off as like my most hated family and now they're arguably the ones I'm rooting for the most to come back together. I love Adam, I love Mr. Groff. I do want to see, like we get like one scene in an episode of Adam and Mr. Groff bonding. So that's kind of annoying because that was the thing I was looking forward to, to the most coming into season four. But the scenes we do get, I'm really enjoying. And Mr. Groff, like season three and four have been peak for him. I hated him so much in seasons one and two. And even when I was re-watching the show before season four came out, I was like, oh my God, I hate him so much. But season three just really turned him around for me and it's remained to see through season four as well. I actually love him. I I love him too much, I think. I don't know why I like him so much. I think it's because he's had real growth and I love when characters actually grow and learn from their mistakes. And Adam riding the horse was really wholesome too. His first time doing that and overcoming fear and managing to relay that advice onto his dad as well. Uh, I think Adam and Jem will probably end up being a couple. Um, there was a little hints there thrown into the, through the episode, like Maureen said, oh, she's pretty and I don't know, Jem seems like she might be a little interested. She keeps giving them some looks, so I think they'll end up being a couple. What was with these weird omens surrounding Eric and his face though? Like that random Bible in the middle of the street, then the poo on him, and then the poo on him again. And then he met that lady, he needed money, and he talked about the soup kitchen, he just dragged him there. I feel like it does show like the universe is trying to lead him towards his faith and with him showing like literally getting dragged there in his normal style that was his like first time being queer in that space so like he didn't really get a bad reception which is a positive thing but he's learned that the soup kitchen is closing down so I don't know if he's going to do something to like campaign for that. I don't really know where I stand with the whole Jean and her talk show thing like I, I agree she shouldn't have taken the job on in the first place. I don't understand why the show is doing so badly. Like, is it because she just rambles on for a long time and that's not really what radio shows are like? Probably, because when I think about it now, like, radio people don't really talk for long, do they? And I probably would get bored if they were speaking for a long time. She's definitely more used to the therapy, like, hour-long sessions, going through everything in such depth and providing such background info, like, the alternative names for Viagra. Um, Whereas on a radio, it's all quick pace, like get to a caller, give the give a short and concise answer, then something else, like give a little bit of fact, but she like goes so in depth and goes on such lengthy speeches about things, it can get a bit old, I suppose. So O is there to revamp the radio show and they probably only have like a 30 minute or an hour time slot as well, so she can't really be rambling on the whole time, but it does feel like she's kind of losing her control I guess she's always been a bit of a control freak hasn't she and now that she's working on a radio show she's not the boss like it's the higher ups that make the decision so things are changing for her and she doesn't have any control over it and like she feels like she doesn't have control in her life like with her baby as well she's struggling with all of that so it's just all like mounting on top of her she's gonna gonna have a breakdown eventually and the whole Thing with her sister what's her sister's name again oh my god julie joanna no joanna i'm not really too fussed about her i feel like her only point of being here is to get dan in the baby's life but then i don't know how that's all gonna work like will she be in a relationship with him while he's the father of her niece like that family tree be wild in like if they have a child their stepsister will also be their cousin so yeah <laughs> logistics of that and i don't really care about like her either she's another new character i kind of overlook I, I forget she's there she's not one that's on screen all the time like abby roman and aisha so i'm not like heavily bothered by her but when she's on screen i'm like do i really care about you no <laughs> that's it for today guys thanks for watching my reaction to season four episode four of sex education if you want to watch my uncle reactions the link to the patreon page will be in the description below leave a like if you enjoyed and i'll see you next time for episode five bye